Despite being busy as the Prime Minister, Najib Razak took time to call the Government Pension Fund Chairman to get him to disburse funds immediately to SRC rather than wait for a Government guarantee to come through, the Court heard today. Pension Fund KWAP had proposed a 1 billion ringgit loan for SRC instead of the requested 3.95 billion, but Najib Razak had told the fund's chairman that 2 billion would suffice. By the Malaysian Insight, this is The People vs. Najib Razak. Follow us into the courtroom where it all happens. I'm Patrick Teo. Najib was in court on time for day 35 of his SRC international trial. Dressed in a dark grey suit with a red tie, the former Prime Minister got out of his car and made quick way to the lifts. There were no supporters to greet him this morning. While waiting for proceedings to start, Najib chatted with an aide in the public gallery. Then, as Judge Nazlan entered the courtroom, Najib entered the dock and closed the door behind him. The prosecution's 44th witness, Matnor Nawi, took the stand briefly to identify someone in the room, Zaid Taib, who was an aide to a man whose name we've heard repeatedly throughout the trial, Nick Faisal Arif Kamel. After Matno was excused, one Abdul Aziz, one Abdullah, took the stand. He was formerly Treasury Secretary General. He also served as Chairman of KWAP. Speaking softly with a slight slur in his words, one Abdul Aziz read from a prepared statement. Ray will tell us more. Wan Abdul Aziz confirmed that during his tenure, SRC had received 4 billion ringgit in loans from KWAP. He also corroborated a letter which former KWAP CEO Azian Muhammad Noor had received from Najib's special officer, the late Azlin Alias. If you recall, Azian and Azlin had met after hours at a hotel in Kuala Lumpur, where Azlin had hand-delivered the letter to Azian. The letter dated June 3, 2011, was from SRC to request for a 3.95 billion loan. It was signed by Nick Faisal and included a footnote from Najib saying, I agree with the proposal. The witness said that ASEAN had shown him this letter and he took it to mean that Najib agreed to the loan. Nevertheless, KWAP's panel had initially only agreed to give SRC a 1 billion ringgit loan. One Abdul Aziz had gone to meet Najib personally at the Prime Minister's office to inform him about the panel's decision. Najib told him that 2 billion ringgit instead of 3.95 billion ringgit would suffice and asked one Abdul Aziz to expedite the loan payout. Eventually, the fund decided to give SRC the 2 billion ringgit loan on the condition it was given to 1MDB, which owned SRC at the time, and that the government provides a guarantee. Then, on March 13, 2012, Nick Faisal requested for additional funding. His letter to KWAP was accompanied by a resolution signed by Najib in February 2012, where the former PM agreed to provide a government guarantee. KWAP relented and referred to the terms of the first loan. While the witness was going through his statement, Najib sat watching, slouched in the dock. Prosecutor Suhaimi Ibrahim asked Wan Abdul Aziz why he had abstained from joining discussions about the loan at KWAP's investment panel meetings. The witness said it would have been a conflict of interest. As Treasury Secretary-General, MOF came under his purview, and SRC was under the purview of MOF Inc. He told the court that Najib had called to request for the second 2 billion ringgit loan to be disbursed on the same day it was approved and before the government guarantee was given. This, he said, was out of the ordinary. After that, Defence Counsel Farhan Reid began cross-examination. The lawyer took his time to meticulously go through one Abdul Aziz's education and professional credentials. 
Then, surprisingly, Judge Nazlan himself called for a ten-minute break. Najib, who looked bored during the witness's testimony, quickly got out of the dock and was out the door. The break over, lawyer Farhan continued his cross-examination, now referring to the KWAP Act. He repeated some questions that had already been answered previously on record, prompting Judge Naslan to remind the lawyer to be more selective with his questions. One Abdulaziz was then asked to identify several documents. This went on for a while. When the court broke for lunch, Najib left in his black sedan. Cross-examination continued after lunch. Najib, for the most part, listened to the proceedings. Occasionally, he looked down at his phone. The lawyer circled back to the meeting between one Abdul Aziz and Najib in 2011, during which the witness informed the former PM about KWAP's decision to only give SRC a 1 billion ringgit loan. Farhan asked one Abdul Aziz if he interpreted what Najib said, that two billion ringgit would suffice as an instruction. The witness said he took it to mean that it was up to KWAP whether or not they want to loan two billion ringgit. As we know, KWAP eventually gave four billion ringgit to SRC. After that, one Abdulaziz had no further contact with the former prime minister. After that, Farhan inquired whether KWAP had conducted a feasibility study over whether the loan should be backed by a government guarantee or issuance of government securities. Wan Abdulaziz said that this was not under his jurisdiction, but came under Maliami Hamad, the former MOF secretary. Maliami had testified yesterday that he was not aware if any feasibility studies were conducted. The witness was then asked if he received any memo from Erwan Seriga, who took over as SecGen after Wan Abdulaziz, in relation to one of SRC's government guarantees. He said he did not recall receiving it, but Erwan was supposed to give it to him. Not long after this, Farhan requested for court to be adjourned 15 minutes earlier at 4.45 p.m., he told Judge Naslan that he will be done with the witness by lunch tomorrow. The judge echoed, way before lunch, eliciting laughter in the courtroom. The trial will resume tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. when Wan Abdulaziz will be back on the stand. This podcast is produced, written and mixed by Revati Supramaniam, Yappik Kwan, Yvonne Lim and Ravin Palanisami. Additional reporting by Timothy Acharyam. I'm Patrick Teo.